A 28-year-old woman has a routine appointment in your morning GP surgery as she has just found out she is 6 weeks pregnant. She would like some help with smoking cessation during her pregnancy and to discuss treatment options. Currently, she smokes 10 cigarettes a day due to her busy schedule. She doesn't think she would be able to make it to regular meetings. What is the most appropriate smoking cessation treatment to offer her? Since she's pregnant, she may be unable to take some things. I'm not sure if she can take any of these drugs. Because I'm not sure if it's safe in pregnancy. I think stop smoking clinic referral is the easy option to choose because they will know better. Hmm. Yeah, let's see. The answer is nicotine replacement therapy. So a pregnant woman who smoke nicotine replacement therapy should be offered. Berenicline and bupropion are contraindicated. Okay. Bupropion and berenicline are contraindicated in women who are pregnant or breastfeeding and should not be offered to this patient. A stop smoking clinic referral will be appropriate, but this patient has informed you that it will be difficult to, for her to attend regular meetings, I see. Okay, so the clinic appointment will require regular meetings. E-cigarettes should not be routinely advised as the effects of the e-cigarette vapor on the fetus are unknown. However, NICE recommends not discouraging a woman if they are already successfully using e-cigarettes to sp stop smoking. Nicotine replacement therapy is the only treatment license for smoking cessation in pregnancy. Cool, cool. Let's have a read through past medicines notes. Smoking sensation, cessation. NICE release guidance in 2008 on the management of smoking cessation journal points include patients should be offered nicotine replacement therapy, varenicline, or bupropion. NICE state that clinicians should not favor one medication over another. NRT, varenicline, or bupropion should normally be prescribed as part of a con commitment to stop smoking on or before a particular date, target stop date. Prescription of NRT, berenicline, or bupropion should be sufficient to last only until two weeks after the target stop date. Normally, this will be after two weeks of nicotine replacement therapy and three to four weeks for varenicline and bupropion to allow for the different methods of administration and mode of action. Further prescriptions should be given only to people who have demonstrated that their quit attempt is continuing. If unsuccessful using NRT, varenicline, or bupropion, do not offer a repeat prescription within six months unless special circumstances have intervened. Do not offer NRT, varenicline, or bupropion in any combination. So either one of these three. Nicotine replacement therapy. Adverse effects include nausea and vomiting, headaches, and flu-like symptoms. NICE recommend offering a combination of nicotine patches and other form and another form of NRT, such as gum inhaler, lozenge, or nasal spray to people who show a high level of dependence on nicotine or who have found single forms of NRT inadequate in the past. Varenicline, a nicotinic receptor partial agonist, mm, should be started one week before the patient's target date to stop. The recommended course of treatment is 12 weeks. But the patient should be monitored regularly and treatment only continue if not smoking. Hmm. There seems to be some inconsistencies here. Here it says prescription of NRT, varenicline, or bupropion should be sufficient to last only until two weeks after the target stop date. Normally, this will be after two weeks of. 
NRT therapy and 3 to 4 weeks of varenicline and bupropion. Over here it says recommended course of treatment is 12 weeks. It should be started one week before the patient's target date to stop. It has been shown in studies to be more effective than bupropion. Nausea is the most common adverse effect. Other common problems include headache, insomnia, abnormal dreams. Nausea, headache, flu-like symptoms, insomnia and abnormal dreams. Varenicline should be used with caution in patients with a history of depression or self-harm. There are ongoing studies looking at the risk of suicidal behavior in parent patients taking varenicline, contraindicated in pregnancy and breastfeeding. Bupropion, a norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibitor, and nicotinic antagonist. Antagonist? The rest are agonists. Why is this work? Should be started one to two weeks before the patient's target date to stop. Small risk of seizures, one in 1,000, contraindicated in epilepsy, pregnancy, and breastfeeding. Having an eating disorder is a relative contraindication. The pregnant woman, NICE recommend in 2010 that all pregnant women should be tested for smoking using carbon monoxide detectors, partly because some women find it difficult to say that they smoke because the pressure not to smoke during pregnancy is so intense. All women who smoke or have stopped smoking within the last two weeks or those with a carbon monoxide reading of 7 parts per million or above should be referred to NHS Stop Smoking Services. Interventions, the first line intervention in pregnancy should be cognitive behavioral therapy, motivational interviewing, and structured self-help and support from NHS stop, work, stop smoking services. The in evidence for the use of NRT in pregnancy is mixed, but is often used if the above measures fail. There is no evidence that it affects the child's birth weight. Pregnant women should remove the patches before going to bed. As mentioned above, varenicline and bupropion are contraindicated. So the most appropriate would actually be cognitive behavioral therapy, motivational interviewing, or structured self-help from NHS Stop Smoking Services. However, all these require regular appointments. So in this case specifically, nicotine will be the correct answer. The other two are contraindicated. Let's find out why they are contraindicated. Varenicline Champix. It's a partial agonist of the nicotine receptor. Clinical particulars, therapeutic indications, smoking cessation. Binds with high affinity and selectively at the alpha 4 beta 2 neuronal nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Partial agonists. Pregnancy, a moderate amount of data of pregnant women indicated no malformative or fetal neonatal toxicity of varenicline. Animal studies have shown reproductive toxicity as a precautionary measure is pref preferable to avoid the use of varenicline during pregnancy. See section 5.3. Section 5.3. Uh, it's a very long section. 5.2, 5.3. Preclinical safety data. 
No clinical data review, non clinical data review, no, no special hazard for humans based on conventional studies of safety pharmacology, repeated dose toxicity, genotoxicity, fertility, and embryofetal development. In male rats, dose for two years with varenicin, there was a dose related increase in the incidence of hibernoma, tumor of the brown fat, in the offspring of pregnant rats, treated with varenicin. There were decreases in fertility and increases in the auditory startle response. These effects were observed only at exposures considered sufficiently in excess of the maximum human exposure, indicating little relevance to clinical use. So it's very high dose and it's in rats, causes some tumors of the brown fat and reduced fertility. Increase auditory response, however, it's high dose, but it's still not used in pregnancy for safety reasons. Okay, it's like just in case. Bupropion. Bupropion, Zyban. I've searched this before, have I? Bupropion hydrochloride, smoking cessation. Selective inhibitor of the neuronal reuptake of catecholamines, noradrenaline, and dopamine with minimum effect on the reuptake of indolamines, serotonin, and does not inhibit either monoamine oxidase. The mechanism by which bupropion enhances the ability of patients to abstain from smoking is unknown. But in past medicine, it says it's an antagonist. Nicotinic antagonist. In EMC, it says it's unknown. EMC is more reliable. However, it's presumed that the action is mediated by no adrenaline or dopaminergic mechanisms. Okay. That clears the confusion of why both agonists and antagonists can help with smoking sensation. Because by right, nicotinic agonists should be what is helping with smoking sensation, not antagonists. If, if you antagonize it, don't you worsen the withdrawal from nicotine? Yeah. Okay.